Okay, good morning, everyone. Sorry, we're late. I hope no one came at nine. I'm sorry if anyone... You did? I. I'm sorry. We sent out a... Ma- it was in the new... Uh, yeah, it's... Okay, Buch Hashem. It all worked out. A Rosh Chodesh gift. It's good. Yeah, it's beautiful. Right, right outside. It's in... Uh, thank you so much. It's a whole area that's dedicated in memory of Yael Miller's uh, Abba. That we're going to be doing... Uh, What's that? Right, right when you come in. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, go- it's gorgeous over there. This is, this is working for me, yeah. Okay, okay, okay Tov, and um, I'm very, very, very thankful that we're back to learning this, the, this Torah. Was it what, just one week we were off because I was away? Maybe two weeks? I don't know, but... Every week that I don't start off my week with like getting my geula mindset, you know, on it, I feel something is missing. So I'm very thankful, and I want to. We have a new month, Chodesh Tov. We have a new month of uh, of sponsors. So just want to mention Miriam and Yossi Sassen, Leilu Nishmas Pinchas Menachem Ben Avram David, Zichron Levrocha, marking Miriam's Abba's first yurtzeit this month, Yud Bet Sivan, and also uh, uh, Ira Brown in honor of his 50th birthday which is on the 7th of Sivan. And today, the weekly sponsorship is by Mindy Barad in memory of Mindy's Abba, Mary Yeshua ben Asher, Anshel HaKohen, Zichon Livracha. And today, specifically, Sunday May, today is the 21st, right? Sunday the 21st? Yeah. Wednesday. 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 Let me just finish what I have over here one second. And then Sunday, today, is in memory of, uh, it's by Batya and David Rich, in memory of David's grandmother, Shana Bat David. And? Where? Oh, on top, on top. Oh, and Dahlia or Lev's, a, a monthly sponsorship. I guess this is hot off the press, because this is not on there. They're going to have to reprint this one. In loving memory of Dahlia's sister, Joan Fader. Zichon Livracha, Chana Bat Shmuel Halevi, and Sarah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for making sure I saw that one. Thank you. Okay, we're going to... Let's, let's come back together. Let this share a little bit shorter because it's already late today. We'll do as much as we can. Hmm. It's so bizarre learning this stuff after being in America. I'm telling you, this is, it's, so, it's so weird. It's so weird. A lot of Shad Dishmai right now. A lot of help. Okay. Kacha. The last thing that we learned, that we started to learn, was that we have to start preparing the vessels for a much bigger image of Hashem that we have. Much bigger image of Hashem that we have. When I say that it's hard to say this after being in America, it's not because uh, there there's less of an, that people have a less of an image of God than we do too. No. It's that the response, I was talking about this on Shabbos, it's, it's that the responsibility of those that are here in the land where the Nevua, Migdash, Malchut will all be restored is, is basically, there's so much more of an expectation and a responsibility on those that are here. Mm-hmm. It's so much more of a responsibility. That's really the word we kept on saying over Shabbos. And it's the word that I'm, God, I'm feeling it so intensely. Um, and we're trying so hard to kind of like make sense between these two worlds of, um, of what are we really preparing for? for what, what new thing are we preparing for? And what is it that we still have to hold on to forever? And it's this mingling of worlds. And in a nutshell, what we've been describing is that what was the thing that kept a Jew a Jew for thousands of years besides this hope, but on a practical <coughs> level? What is the thing that kept a Jew a Jew? His adherence to halacha. Halacha. I mean, there, there, was, there, was, there was the world of halacha that kept a person in the world of Yiddishkeit, right? within the Dal Amot of Yadut. And now we come back to Eretz Yisrael. We're starting to come back and we realize that we need something more. Not instead, chas v'shalom, like we made clear, but we need something, we need additional things. And what is the additional thing that it's, it used to be just just for Yechidim, that is this access to what's called Pnimiyut HaTorah, the inner worlds, the inner dimensions of the Torah. 
And today we see, Baruch Hashem, that more and more and more people all over the place, both here and in Chutz Laaretz, are very much in tune with, with, with satiating, not, not satiating, but responding to what they really, really not need and want, which is this concept of tuning into the inner chambers of the Torah, Pnimiyut Torah. I know for many of you, that's actually the only world that you know. But that's not the norm. You understand that women, or even men, but definitely women learning this type of stuff. I know for many of you, that's what you know because you're born into that world already, or at least the world of Yiddishkeit that you know of, this is a given. It wasn't like this at all. <laughs> mamash, mamash, lo. Ah, ayin tov. We're just saying good things today. I'm just saying, I'm just saying good things. I'm just saying good things. Here, Baruch Hashem, it's still good. It, we're, and, and, and it's more, and it's growing. And it's growing more and more and more and more and more. But we're still in this place of trying to balance out the kalim and the or, the vessels and the light, creating kalims to prepare us for that which we, the reason we, we came back to Eretz Yisrael. And it's very clear that the reason that we came back to Eretz Yisrael is not because we had nowhere else to go to. Anyone that speaks like that is missing out on the whole bigger picture of what's going on over here. We came to Eretz Yisrael because our neshamas were sick of being homeless. Pashut, we were sick of being homeless. And part of the neshama stopping to be homeless is not just that it, it, it's within its body, it's residing in the right place, but that it's also starting to do what it does when it feels at home. And that is operating within the realm of Ruach HaKodesh, prophecy, Malchut, this is the week of Malchut, words like Migdash, words like, you know, temple, all this temple talk and everything. These are things that the Neshama very much does and is involved with when it stops being homeless. But we're still trying to, we're, you know, we're still trying to, me- we're still trying to just mesh it all together for it all to feel right and feel nachon and feel like we're actually building something and that we have a, we have a mahalach, we have a kivun. So this is, we have, to, we have to still understand the difference of what recent previous generations were busy doing with their Yiddishkeit and what our generation is busy doing with our Yiddishkeit, especially since we had a Lubavitcher Rebbe. We have a Lubavitcher Rebbe who, who made it so clear to us that this can happen, that flip can happen at any given second, that everything more or less is, the, the, the Friedrich Rebbe already said this, Everything is, everything is more or less ready. He said, all you got to do is let tzachzeach et ha kaftorim. You just got to clear off the buttons, meaning like it's the last stages. And on Shabbos, we said a Torah from the Sadi Ger Rebbe that said, we're, we're right there. The Gilui Shechina is right about, right around, right around, mamish by our heads already. But why can't, so why doesn't it feel like that? It's because we're, we're, you know, our heads are, yeah, we're looking down. So if you looked up, you'll be able to see what's right in front of you. And this Sefer is really allowing us, I feel like it's preparing us for, for this incredible opportunity to to look up, look straight up, zokef kfufim, standing upright, komemiyut, komemiyut l'artseinu, standing up. So if you could please open up on Daf Nun Hei. We're going to continue from Daf Nun Hei right now. Now, does anyone mind, just because it's really stuffy in here, either, huh? Yeah, but not, not on the level that everyone will... Put on their winter jackets, yeah. The problem is, it's, it's this is pretty stuffy here. The, the, the window, it's not, it's not. It wasn't. Well, we have a holy neighbor that's like right here. It's not so much of a. Yeah, if anyone starts to shiver and shake, just just men shears are like such a different sock. It's like that. This was on an hour before the men come in already. You know. Okay. Look at Daf Nun Hey. We'll see Beis Hadash how much we could do. נחדד יותר את ההבדל בין ההכשר והמסוגלות של הדורות האחרונים למדרגות הגדולות לעומת המצב של עם ישראל בגדות. Let's sharpen a bit more the difference between preparing what the last generations and this generation is capable of reaching uh, in comparison to where we were for 2,000 years. את העליות והמורדות במצבו של עם ישראל you want to understand the ups and the downs and the all-arounds of Am Yisrael? Let's just do a parable to the period of life of, of, a, of a human being. 
We have times, we have an era in life where we're very little, very small, like a little child. Then there's uh, moments, there's periods of time where you get older and you grow, you grow up. And certainly, there's a tremendous difference between the operation of a person, between their time when they're little and small, to the time that they're much more, that they're older. When a person's in smallness, so as much as we say, the younger you are, the purer you are, the cleaner you are, the, the holier you are, that may all be true, but there's less of it. Yes, she agrees. she agrees. She's reminding us that it's true. The mo- and it is true, but the less expect- expectance we have of s- little people, small people, to be big people. Unless you have a new shita that you guys do in the house where you, <laughs> you already have expectations. That they, you know. But he's saying, we don't. This, it is what it is. We have this very clear understanding of we're dealing with a human being that is the most precious, lovable, yummy, gushy, all the words you want to add in there. But it's, we don't have an expectation that they're going to get up and start acting like, a, like an adult. Right? We also, they're also strength of life. I mean, physically, they're not so strong either. The ilu bagruto. When a person gets older, a person's mind, a person's dad is wide, and their life is rich and developed. Hopefully, it's like this. So to Am Yisrael. Sometimes, what does it mean? Sometimes we're gesund, we are full. We are where we're, we're, we are. How we can we can be, and sometimes peamim bemiut gadol, and sometimes we act like we're toddlers, right? Mamash ktanim ktanim, and you can you can't have any expectation that people are acting like ktanim that suddenly they're going to act like like gdolim. Vaitmatut agdolah biyoter hi agalut. The smallest smallest mindset of a of a. Am Yisrael on the on this like line of age is when you're is is galut, is exile. Shenit uma, that the nation was completely crushed. Ve'ashchinaht ma'ata me'od, and the shchina became so 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 small, or so distant is probably a better word. Ad shenit stam tzemal nekuda ktana k'mo hayareach b'si hamiut. That the Shekhinah became, it shrunk so small, it, 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 it's, it's likened to the moon right before it starts to then like, flip and grow again, right? So what, what day of the month is that? Now. Now, right? Rosh Hashanah. Bakesa liyom chagenu. Can't barely see anything. What does it mean? Sihara bishle Musa. That's in Aramaic. A moon in its completion. Two. It's the 15th, right? The middle. It's always complete. And every month we go through this on a, the size of the moon level. Rav Sasson is saying is that over the years we've almost gone back to a place where we're like what the moon looks like on Rosh Chodesh. Barely visible. Barely, barely visible. What does this mean that we've reached places where it's barely visible? I think many of us feel this on a day-to-day action I mean, in our lives all the time. We have moments in our life where we're like Tet Vav B'chodesh, where it's like the middle of the month, and we feel we are ourselves. The all of me is shining out. The most of me is coming out. Then there are times where I don't even recognize myself when I look in the mirror, or... If I do recognize myself when I look in the mirror, I want to smash the mirror, mm. right? Either. But what the difference is between gadlut and, and, and katnut. Historically, we barely were able to recognize ourselves for thousands of years of being, of being made fun of, of being murdered, of being hunted down, 
there was barely a recognition of what Am Yisrael, who Am Yisrael was, barely, mamash barely. So in that state of barely being able to be recognizable, because we're so, we were so small, what kind of expectation could have been for us to reach big heights? Now what's the tension that we're going through right now in the world, in our lives? Is that supposedly, if I asked you, where is Am Yisrael right now? So what would you say? Katnut or Gadlut? It's crazy, no? You say Katnut. If, you, if I'd ask a Jew 80 years ago that was sitting around this table right now, say, hey, offer your opinion. Where do you think Am Yisrael is right now? Katnut or Gadlut? What would they say? Gadlut. The greatest Gadlut. <laughs> I don't know if they'd even go through that Afghana. They wouldn't even believe that anyone could think that we, we would say Katnut. And yet, we're sitting around the table and the natural response is if <laughs> Katnut. So let's see how he explains this tension and why it's such a confusing time right now. And if you feel confused, it's want to make you feel good. Like that's a good thing, meaning it's normal. Because it's not, it, 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 nothing is really adding up the way that it should have been according to like a script where then this happened, then this happened. Then she broke his heart, and then he found her. But then they're like spending 75 years of <coughs> making sure they really are happy with their decision they made 75 years ago, right? That's not how a script... That movie wouldn't sell. <laughs> that movie wouldn't sell, right? This movie is not selling, right? This seret, you know, in, in, in modern Hebrew today, slang, Abba tachai beseret, right? In America, they don't say that. Kids don't say to their parents, wow, you're living in movies. You know, people don't say you're living in a movie. Here, it's a very big thing. Tachayim, it's true. Yesh po seret. Tachayim beseret. It's a movie. It's just not a movie that's really selling. It's because it's such a weird, the credits haven't come yet. Thank God. Because the credits is just one thing, you know. Producer, Hashem, clearly. Main, main, you know, main actor, Mashiach. That's, that's what we're waiting for. Those are the credits. But until we get there... You have to figure out what is the script and what's going on over here. I think all the moments of God, God uh, the largeness that we've seen in unity feels the bit, feels big. Like like we're not in a small place. Like on Rosh Hashanah, the parade went on and on. And the way people have come together in, in happiness and in tragedy, it doesn't feel like a small place. It, fe- it feels like there are moments of big. Yeah, of for, sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. No, there are mo- 100%. 100% there are moments we're trying to make just connect all the dots. Yeah? Um, yeah. I learned that, that I'm not scholar, this is a perfect time for introspection. I mean, every day. More so that what is your, like, you know, if your, your vision for the month for yourself. Mm-hmm. So if, as you said, that, that it went to a small state, every person individually can really get to that place in order to bring it to that place. So it's great. It's great learning. It's great uh, alignment for today's learning because it's exactly what, what we're starting with right now. You know why? Because there's so much less. Of, it's good because there's less of you. Meaning, Rosh Chodesh is a good time for introspection because Baruch Hashem, there's more room for Hashem to come into the into the mm-hmm. picture because there's less of you <laughs> there. Okay, Al Ken, second bottom paragraph. Afshe bizgulotenu. Even though, according to the zgula of Am Yisrael, that we're made of something so special, anu reuyim lekochot chayim adirim uleamalot kodesh atzumot, we are we are worthy, we are suitable for this tremendous life force and a very high and exalted holiness to 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 happen in our lives. Ena kadosh baruch hu mashpi alein with kolotana malot, kevan sheinenu mesugilim lechilan adayin. In a weird, in an interesting way, what he's saying here, without saying it, is that you don't want the base of Mikdash to come down today the way that your kelim are today, because that would be hell. That would be hell. What, what would be hell? So we're under the assumption. No, no, no. If the base of Mikdash is coming down. It means all the kelim are there and everything's there. Bless you. But what he's saying over here is that there are tremendous lights that are waiting for this door. But Hashem's chesed, in a certain way, is that He doesn't bring it fully on. 
Because if he did, and we don't know how to receive it properly, it would be torture. Example given, Eretz Yisrael. You understand? What's the greatest example we have to what he just said? Well, he gave us back Eretz Yisrael after 2,000 years. It's been a pretty simple, smooth ride since then, no? It's been pretty simple because we're still trying to understand what it even means to be here. And we don't even have the proper vessels to understanding like what, what it actually means to contain the light of, of the land itself. We're still working with it. So all those other exalted levels that come with the land, like I mentioned before, Ruach HaKodesh, Nevu'ah, Malchut, Mikdash, are waiting for us to develop the proper Yiddishkeit, the proper way of living as Jews in the land, because otherwise we're just going to receive a lot more gifts that we have absolutely no idea what to do with them, and in some situations, it may even cause more damage than good. This is what the Satmar Rebbe was petrified of. You understand, right? Is it making sense now? Mm-hmm. The Satmar Rebbe was petrified, rightfully so, that the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael would go way over everyone's head and it would just be a national Indian, which in many cases is very, very, very true. Very true. And we're trying to bridge the gap. We're trying to make heaven and earth kiss over here. We're trying to make a, a, a zivug out of these two worlds. But it takes a lot of deep, deep refinement to figure out, how do I know that I'm someone that's actually preparing myself for the light that Hashem wants to give me living in Eretz Yisrael? How do I know? How do I know that I'm that person, right? Third line. Let's give another parable. He's saying, I know I'm talking big things here. I'm going to keep on bringing down parables. But let's give a parable to Ben Melech, to the son of a king. A king that has a son that loves him and he wants to teach him all the wisdom of Malchut, of governing, of being a king. He wants to give a place in his son's hand all of his treasures ve'oshel kochotav and the wealth of his of his strength. Af sheyesh la'melech shefa atzum latet libno, even though the king has a tremendous abundance to give to his child, hu eino noten lo ela lefi midat itpatchuto shel bno. The king only gives his son in accordance to the measure of his development. Well, out of love, out of rachamim. Not because he's like, I have to teach you patience, but basically what he's saying, listen, what I'm giving you, what I'm giving you is the greatest gift in the world. I, I got to give it to you in a way that you could actually contain it. Right? In a way that you could actually contain it. Kshehu katan noten lo rak dvarim psisim upshutim. So when he's young, the father gives the king very basic and simple things in accordance to how much he could contain and how much he even wants. I'm going to say that again. In accordance to how much the child can contain and in accordance to how much the child really wants. If I would ask you how much of Am Yisrael really wants Beis Amidash today, so we would understand why it hasn't happened yet. Or if I'd ask you how much light can we really contain right now We'd understand why the, the, the concealment is the level that it's at. Uchshehu <clears throat> gadel, but when the kid grows up, belevavon niftach, and the heart opens, v'chayav na'asim ashirim umuguvanim, and now his life becomes so much more rich, so much colorful, so much more multidimensional, az yachol ha-melech l'archiv imo et ha-dibur. Then the king could start to be bigger with his words. And explaining to his son how to be a king. Be, to explain also to explain to the king what kind of a wealth we have here, what kind of a treasure chest we have to work with here. Basically how to run how to run the whole the whole thing, how to run the whole show. You have to understand, friends. <laughs> Beis HaMikdash coming down to the world is not a Jewish, it's not just solely for the Jewish people, right? By the way, is everyone freezing in here? 
You're being polite? <laughs> okay, now Bati is shivering. I'm sorry. Should we turn it off? We could, you're okay? Okay, okay. Let, let's continue. If I see you literally start to become a snowflake, then we'll listen. Okay. <laughs> Vahaviotim el ar kochi vesimachtim evet filati, Yishaya Anavia says, Ki beiti beit fila yikare le chol haamim. The house of God will be a house of God for all nations. That's a big thing. It's a huge, huge thing. It's not just making sure we have the best shul in the world, it means that everyone wins. Everyone wins. Right now, in the state that we're at, the level that we're at so far, we, we still don't have the capability of understanding what it means to be a light for all nations of the world in a way that the nations of the world are waiting for us. They're waiting for us. They are. So we're still in this process of we're baderech l'shama. How do you access the keys to know how to be worthy? Or how to, how to understand how to run the ship? So that's the learning that we're doing. Pnimiyut Torah. You see, in Galut, we were so small, all we needed in order to access how to be a good Jew was learn the halacha. And that just keeps you in check with how to just make sure you're, 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 you're sticking with God's ratzon, which we say since the time the Beis HaMadosh was destroyed, and now that we've come back to Eretz Yisrael, we realize, okay, that was, that's what maintained our status as good Jews in Galut. But now that we're here, how do we access all the bigger dreams that Hashem has for us as bigger people, as older people, as more capable people, as more capable people. You know, after the Six Day War, everyone was certain that the rabbis were going to start to tell the students, wow, now with such revealed miracles and the opportunity to rebuild Yerushalayim in its entirety, the Torah that we're going to learn now is going to be such deeper and deeper Torah. But in most yeshivas, what was the lashon? What was the vibe? What was the ruach? What, does anyone know like what was going on in most yeshivas after 1967? You'd think there would be such a calling for a new dimension of light, a new, you know, tuning into... Okay, listen, now there's going to be more people coming from outside, so we've got to be stronger in the inside and learn more and more and more halacha. And make sure we just know how to, that, no, that no one can get into us. Like we have to make sure, the, you know, we have to make sure our borders are stronger. Because mm-hmm. now we're going to be, you know, everyone's going to be coming here. It's going to be bigger. We've just got to learn more and more of whatever we have until now. And it was only like, you know, many Baal Tshuvas that heard the calling of Yerushalayim. And they came they were from different places in the world. They thought a new light was coming down on Zion. Or Chadash on Zion Ta'ir. They saw the miracles of the world, enlightened big neshamas would come from all over the world. And the first thing many of them were told was like, you have to cut your ponytail to sit and learn Torah. Or, or other things of just, really? You know, ma'bemet? And we're still learning how to merge these two worlds. We're still figuring it out. We're still, it's, it's a very slow process, mamash. And we're still figuring out how to take big light that saw big lights take place. They thought, okay, people are getting it together. It's going to be a house of prayer for all nations. We're still not there, but we're on our way. We're on our way. So he continues, and he, he explains here. Banim Shal, second paragraph, Be'et ha-mi'ut ve'hagalut. In a state of exile and of being small, Hare anu kiktanim. We're like little people. As we were distanced further and further from living a life of like, Beis Hamikdash Hashem, you know, also much light taking place. And as individuals, as people living our lives, what shayachut do we have to living such a high and exalted life? Zoi bechinat agalut. We say this. Where do we say this? Of? Of Shalosh Regalim, right? I think the Lashon is, We say this. 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 We 
and we were distanced more and more from the place where we're supposed to be. And now, due to that, we can't be who we're supposed to be. And we can't do what we're supposed to do. So let's fast forward now. It's very interesting that that's still in the davening that we're saying these days, right? In Safmar, they have a different nasach. <laughs> they don't say that, it's a joke. Meaning, because of our chataim, we were exiled to our land, like we went back to our land. But what we're saying is, okay, so fast forward now. Yala, chazamu abayta. But we're still, we're still not there, but we are on the Adama, but we still don't really know how to be. You have to understand, in the most ideal situation, all of us would be the deepest prophets right now if we actually knew how to be here right now. Do you, you realize that? If in the most ideal situation that, we, that, that really is w- what the land is waiting for, Rav Cook speaks about this in his Talmidim, definitely Rav Charlap spoke about this, and, 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 and the Rav Nazir, this is what they were trying to bring down, is that the type of Torah and Yiddishkeit that we live and celebrate when we come back to our land after 2,000 years of Galut has to be has to bring out of each and every one of us this very, very, very deep and exalted way of living. Completely different world of what we're used to. Nothing reminiscent of all, at all of the way it was when we were outside of the land. So that's a very tall order. No, it's a very tall order. It's a very tall order. And we're still trying to you know, make, understand how, how we do that, how we how we, you know, there's, there's a word that when you used to go to kibbutz, it was called hachshara, right? So it's like there's still a hachshara, which means a preparing of, of what that exactly means. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, the thing that comes to my head is, I mean, I think so, Leo said, um, the, the Sorshim about Rina, about Rina was like, how do I reach my potential? And Abba, you reaching your potential. And then you see these people who are working so hard, and it's a 15 year old who's worried about her potential and how can she do more and and her potential was to reach out to the girl I mean my daughter told me how there was a girl across the street that had no friends and she invited her over every Shabbos to play Monopoly you know mm-hmm. like is this what it looks like it's like, one it's listen alavai alavai each of us were was worried about reaching our potential but that's still not the the level we're talking about because the level we're talking about is reaching beyond our potential. I know that sounds insane, right? What does that even mean? Huh? Even individually, too. Even individually, too. The geula of the prat can only enable the collective potential. But even on an individual level, it's that, okay, my potential is I can do that, right? But I'm sure that Hashem brought me back to Yerushalayim after 2,000 years to even go beyond what, my, what I think my potential is. An athlete who reaches a seat uh, and then says, okay, I hit that goal, now I'm going for the next one. And so each of us has to, we reach our goal and say, I made it, now I'm going the next round up. Mm-hmm. So I've, it's amazing, as you're saying this, I'm like, okay, so we were, so, it, so the people here, we made it, it was 1940, we made it, 1967, beyond our wildest potential, and then, and breaks. <laughs> right? It's, it, it's so bizarre. Because some people, get, <laughs> some people get nervous, they get scared when they hit something and then think about the next step and that takes them back. So in, in a certain way, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that being enlightened today means that you don't have fear to think big. Mamash, that's a very big, big thing. That you're not stricken with fear in order to think much bigger you live with bitachon that Hashem will give you the tools necessary as long as you keep on walking and you don't stop as well. Yeah, you say Faith in him. Yes, <laughs> very good. Very good, yeah. Um, the Mayim says if we're one neshama and all the parts are the hands, the head, the brain, the feet, has to unite in order to get to the particular light that we all need it. And this fraction is yeah. It's part of it. It's just... Oh, you said, I thought you meant about that in, in order for 
it to come down in a way that we could we could move forward. Everyone has to be here. But you're saying no. Whoever is here right now has to at least make sure they're all operating together. The exactly. batuach. That, that's for sure. <sighs> that's for sure. Although, although unfortunately, I am nervous that that we're going through a very deep sifting through of erev rav. And, and that, that's where it gets, a, that's a whole other shear. It's a, it's a very complicated topic, but it seems that that actually is a big part of the story of, of this man that we're in. There is but something, there is a whole voice within the, the tzibur today that uses, everyone uses the word kedusha, But some are only speaking about kedushat ha-Yisraeliyut as opposed to kedushat ha-Yahadut. Now this is what's interesting, and this may be hard for people to hear, but you've, you're used to that already. If not, you wouldn't come back. Kedushat ha-Yisraeliyut, there, no, there is no such thing. You understand that, right? No. There's no such thing as Kedushat ha-Yisraeliyut. No. What does that mean, exactly? I don't know. What, what is... No, there's no such thing, meaning Kedushat ha-Yisraeliyut, me, and, and this is the... It, it's... It's, that, that, that sound is getting louder. Kedushat Yisraelut means there's some kind of holiness of Israelism. It's B'diyuk, B'diyuk. Meaning, meaning, yeah, meaning there's all the Kedusha in the world of Israel. Meaning, of course there is. But, but not the, but not, exactly. I mean, of course there is. Listen, Rabbi Nachman, half of Likutei Maran. He's saying Isha Israeli, actually. So sometimes, that's why maybe in Israel he got so much bigger than, than, than you know, Rabbi Nachman's like, he uses Kedushat Isha Israeli all the time. But really, the way that it's being portrayed is like, so how do you make Ahdus with people that's, that just believe in sanctifying Israeliism? I don't even know what that, that means, because you can be a Christian Israeli, you can be an Arab Israeli, you can be a... Any type of Israeli, according to the, the law, the way that it works here with you know citizenship and everything, so there's, there's a kedusha of just being like good uh, human being to the whole like nations, all nations of the world. We did not come back to build here a country, sanctifying Israeliism, that's void of the concept of Yisrael. Like even when you say it in like the void of what Yaakov and Yisrael represent. So when we look at it like that, we're like, ah, you thought you came back here to build this whole national movement? You're still little kids. So we can't expect too much of you. Shekhinah is saying, okay, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And then anyone that dares to talk like the way I'm saying right now, then they get, they get thrown into some kind of labeling of like, oh, he's being a fanatic. It's, it's just hopefully trying to understand why things feel like they've been stuck for so long. It's because we have to declog the tzinorot, the pipelines, in the name of really loving someone. When I look at someone that holds a flag, the flag, the name of sanctifying Israeliism, and wants me to believe in that, I say to him, I believe in your nefesh elokit way too much to fall into this. Way, I love you way too much. If I didn't love you, I would, I would, I would, I would raise that banner as well. We came back here to raise the, the, the banner of Amachazir Shechina To Letzion. It's a Shechina identity. It's Shechina driven, the campaign of coming back to Eretz Yisrael. It's Shechina driven. It's Nevoah driven. It's Migdash driven. It's Malchus driven. And we have to keep on, on raising that flag with such Simcha, in such love. But to realize Hashem can only, the, the Father, Hashem can do anything, but Hashem only gives us access to the treasure chest and in our situation the treasure is what Yerushalayim is really all about and to quote Leo again Leo said so beautifully when he was interviewed in Merkaz Arav Leo Yom Yerushalayim he said what do you say about this day he's like I don't really call this Yom Yerushalayim because Yom, Yer- Yom Yerushalayim and it's real is the Yom Beit HaMikdash it's the full thing he's like so Yom Yerushalayim Chalki right <laughs> or something like that. He used an interesting lashon. He's he an interesting lashon there, because this is why we're, we're we're back, and we still. This doesn't mean, God forbid, that that means that everyone that stands in our way of understanding this must be demolished. And God forbid, it's that we haven't given over our message of why we're back yet in the right way, not to the world and not to ourselves, and we're still working on it.
We're still working on it. What a schut. Thank God. Sorry? Tremendous. Tremendous. Yeah. Betach. Of course they know that. Of course, of course, of course. Listen, you want to do tshuva? You want to do tshuva? Take a group of like believing chavra from that, that is not from, right? But like the real Hamish a Sunday morning but like choir chavra, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> Go with, spend a day with them talking about King David and Psalms, right? Sometimes they could, they just, they, it's, it's crazy, right? And you tell Yidla, listen, say some to him, it's, 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 it's chashuv. Oh, it sounds like such a Musa Shmuz, it's an outdated thing. It's an unbelievable thing. So our vessels, our vessels for this type of a light is still in the process. Our, our vessels, our accessing these vessels, is, it comes through learning Pshnimiyuta Torah, the inner dimensions of the Torah. And specifically in our time, obviously it's through the, the Gra and the Ramchal and the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh and all of this Talmidim. This is how we're, this is, you know, more and more of this world of Torah. More and more you'll never end up in, in, in shuls that you can't tell if it's a shul or if it's an eighth grade graduation. Well, there won't be shilas anymore. It won't be confusing. You'll know where you are. You'll understand where you are. In Gullus, you don't understand where you are. You're not sure what's what. When is Shabbos? What's shul? What's not? You don't understand. You will know where we are. It'll be clear to us where we are and how to act where you are. Yeah. Practical tool is doing what you and Shachar did by Aleph deciding to uproot your life and move here and raise your children here. We have to first, we have to first make sure that we're in check. Yeah, that's a big thing I was getting this last trip, mamash. If, if everybody was here? I think you're living it. But continue refocusing on what it is that we're doing here. Like, it's not like, like we got here, check, done. It's, okay, eight, what's the next goal? What's the next goal? Just like whatever that little step is, and for every one of us, it's going to be different, but like where are we walking towards? We're marching towards Yerushalayim. We're mar- marching towards Harabai, and like... We're bringing that besimcha and, 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 and together, and like whether it's having a play date with your kid or, 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 or having a Shabbos meal together or coming for tefillah, like it's all those little steps so that we do. But, it, it's, yeah. but, it, but it's living with consciousness. It's kind of like Ariel is saying, it's living with an awareness and a consciousness, a collective consciousness of all the little things that you're doing. The awareness of it all day long of being like, this is part of a bigger picture that's playing a vital role in redemption. Living with that consciousness, giving that awareness to our children is, it's, yeah, now there's, uh, again, the way that we... that you're preparing to eat and like it's every single It's everything, it's all the Torah you're learning. It's, it's, it's in everything, but again, to refocus the awareness, tefillah, he's voted us, all these things that keep on reminding. We always think it's like this one thing that we do and now we're going to be in the right path. It's, it's not that. It's everything I need to do to be in touch with my actions. Because I'm, I'm not supposed to stop acting. I'm not supposed to stop doing things. I'm not supposed to stop learning halacha. But the awareness of why I'm learning halacha, keeping halacha, is, is, is a completely different ballgame once you hear. Now, in Galut, again, access to awareness is Minimal. Minimal. The Eretz Yisrael, the point, what is, what is nevuah? What is prophecy? It's this consciousness that's so in tune, not just with your consciousness, even with your subconsciousness. It's living life with awareness. I'm very aware of how much you mean to me, how much I mean to you. I'm aware of every mitzvah that I'm doing, how much it means to me to do this mitzvah, how much it means to me to think about other Jewish people, how much it means to me to think about non-Jewish people. All, all the the awareness levels. Like, and then, when this is what I'm working on every single day, when I walk into a house of God, I'm not, 
it's a house of God, right? Suddenly, every every place becomes a house of God. You know, every every interaction becomes a, a, a this experience where there's an opportunity to bring down light from Gan Eden, and it really feels like that because it really is, right? But I understand this need to know, like, okay, so Tachlis, what am I supposed to do? Sometimes it's so freaky to realize, wait a second, maybe I already am doing so much, right? It's, so, it's, such, a, it's such a beautiful thing. And lo lefached, lo leitpached, have bitachon. You're in the program. You're only going to be asking for more. Hashem wants you to ask for more. Hashem wants you to ask for more help. As opposed to the way we are with other people where we hate asking people for help, Hashem loves when you ask for help. For this type of relationship, you have to constantly ask Hashem every single day. Hashem, I'm chazir shechinato letzion. Please, Hashem, let my, I need more help with my awareness of how to see that that's, that's what I've chosen to do with my life and that's what's happening right now. For 2,000 years, no one, could spe- no one could speak like that. And now we're able to speak like this. This is access to different worlds of, of living and Pnimi Torah like never before. That's why I'm saying in the beginning of Shir, 20 years ago, there was never, there was never women would never learn this stuff. M- men wouldn't either, by the way. I'm just saying, but definitely women wouldn't. So to realize you are already in a Parsha. You are already in the program. But to realize what that demands of you and what kind of responsibility that is, is it takes things to the next level. The awareness of it, you know, some responsibilities make you freak out. Some, some, how do you know if you took it on seriously? If you're seriously besamcha. Seems like a stira mina yube, like it contradicts itself. No. If you're seriously besamcha over the opportunity to live your life the way we're talking about right now, something that wasn't given to thousands and thousands of people, that's a serious, happy, happy thing going on in your life. And to dive and to have the tools to understand how the implications of all that. But again, that's what he's saying over here. Treasure chest of the king. He can only give access to the treasure chest of his children, the queen. Let's do this. The queen can only give access to her treasure chest of her da- to her daughters once she gets a sense that her daughters will, will actually understand what it means to have access to the treasure chest. Right? and appreciate to, to contain it to appreciate it not, not only that, to make it even more beautiful to what? Not to not lose the <laughs> listen, it's a good no, 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 what you're saying is a good thing Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Berdichev says that on Shabbos Chazon, that's the Shabbos before Tisha B'av, what happens to each person? Hashem gives each of us an image of, of the third base on Mikdash, he doesn't give it to us he gives an image of it, why? Because it's like a father, or let's say like this, a mother, a queen that gave her princess the jewelry to try on, or to wear, and she lost it the first time. I'm coming back, no, mommy, I promise you, I won't, right? She goes and she loses it again, right? So what does a responsible parent do the third time? She says, I'm going to send you WhatsApp pictures of what it would look like on you, right? (laughs) That's Shabbos Chazon, you get this picture of what it would look like on us, and in accordance to how much we desire you know, living like what we're seeing in a picture, that's how much we'll get access to the jewelry a third time. Right? These are all the mishalim and the nimshalim that the Rav is telling us that, that, that we're working with this because he's saying the further we got from living a life where we knew what we looked like, we understood what we looked like, the, the, the less we, we had an understanding of appreciating what it would be like to, 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 to begin to have it again. I just want to finish this paragraph. Look at the fourth line from the bottom. Kmo katan sheino mitorin levakesh eshet brit velivnotet beito. Like a little kid doesn't wake up one day and say, "I'm looking for a woman to marry me." When they when they're five years old and to begin building his house, ken anu lo ha'inu be'emet b'shelim v'shayachim levakesh mitoch atzmut chayeno et amadregot hakdoshot v'nisaot alalu. For thousands of years, we were like, of, if we asked for like nevua or all these things or living, living like we, we know our potential or beyond our potential could be it, and we would ask for it it would be like a kid that's five years old that's asking Hashem I'm looking to get married so what are you talking about you're five years old he's saying that this, 
the, the, most, the most deepest connection that we can understand between us and Hashem is always Mishalim between woman, woman and man, between husband and wife. Saying, in the Galut, we were like a little kid, we couldn't ask for it. But now, it's like, I think what he's saying is like, now we're in the level, we're in the age of going on Shiduchim. We're going on a Shiduch date. And the question is like, well, the Shadchanit is calling and she's saying, okay, what are you, uh, either what are you looking for? Or tell me a little bit about your life. And the mashal is obviously the Shechina saying, okay, I want to see what you're looking for now that you're back and you're in the Parsha of dating again. Because for 2,000 years of Gullus, no one was dating. But now you're back in the Parsha of dating. So the question really is, what are you looking for? Are you looking for Kedushat HaYisraeliyut? Is that really what you're looking for? Is that what you're looking for? Or are you looking for Nevoah? Are you looking for Mikdash? Are you looking for Malchut? So now, it's like, we don't have it yet, but now at least the Shadchanis is asking us, tell us what you're looking for. I feel like that's really the shlav that we're at right now. And it's a very, very interesting shlav of birur haratzon. So you were basically calling the Shadchanit back and saying, let me get back to you about this, right? Let me get back to you, right? Let me get back to you. I want to make sure that I'm answering correctly. And this is like, this has been the story of 75 years of let me get back to you to make sure I know, you know, <laughs> I know exactly what it is, is on my, what I'm putting on the resume, meaning what I'm presenting to a possible zivug, and also what I'm looking for. And no one, no kala wants to find a chasen that looks like this, right? They want to look like a chasen that looks like this. And no chasen wants to look at, find a kala that thinks like it also. And this is, the, this, is, this is the shlab that we're in. This is understanding that we're at the shidduch table again. And that's a very beautiful time in life. It's a wonderful time in life that Hashem is still saying, like, as an am, as a collective am, what, what do you guys really want? What do you really want? So we're trying to answer that question with utmost honesty. And, and then I think when we realize that that's the question that's presented before us right now, we're a bit more in tune with what exactly is happening right now and where we're at as an Am. Not to get too overly excited that it all happened and everyone always says, Mashiach, see already, just got to open your eyes. I need more than that. I don't, I don't buy that. I need much more than that. That's not... Our grandparents went through Auschwitz not to film to tell us, well, if you really opened your eyes, you'd see Mashiach is here. I need more than that. More than that. I want to feel it, live it, see it. Ki ayin ba'in yira, I'm told I'm going to see it, you know. We're going to see it. So I'm glad you asked what you asked because I think it's a very important thing for us to understand what it is we're looking for to do. And we're going to continue to answer that question uh, in every area of our lives. But specifically in this year, that's what we're going to continue to, to, to look at and to make sure we're aligned with the choices we've made in our life until now, which is the main big one is we made our makom here. Let's figure out what that really means. Bezrat Hashem. Okay. Yishak Koyach. Chodesh Tov Mvorach, everyone. Seriously, B'Simcha, yeah.